So if you're here, you know, I'm Lauren Valdez. Um, I do these free office hours once a month. Okay. So this is masters of architecture, MIT. Uh, they want to know one important thing you imagine contributing to the world upon graduating with a masters of architecture degree. So they're more interested in your trajectory, your purpose, and your reason for dedicating yourself to the pursuit of architecture. Why is now the right time for you to be in school? What do you imagine contributing to the community? How do you imagine we best aid you in accomplishing that goal? This is an incredible, incredible prompt. I wish more universities had a prompt like this because what what they're asking for is who are you what do you care about in the world and how is you doing this master's program going to enable you to do that thing in the world and that's truly what universities are interested in they don't care that you got straight a's in undergrad they don't they don't care about like your resume in detail they want to know what is unique about who you are and how are you going to contribute to the world and so for all of you writing your essays how Having that kind of framing up front, um, something you can think about identifying for yourself about what you want to contribute to the world is something that is a really excellent way to think about what you want to do. Um, for example, I see this a lot in um, essays that are like a master's of computer science. People are like, I want to go work at Google. And here's all the online courses I did um, on these computer programming languages and blah, blah, blah. That's like pretty much 99% of people who are applying have that, the, that same exact thing. So those people, like that doesn't make you stand out. They want to know what are you going to contribute? Whereas if you look at an essay that's on my YouTube channel, it's someone doing a master's in computer science where they are looking at artificial intelligence and they want to work on, um, on, uh, uh, accents and how does artificial intelligence use for um, accents to um, to identify different language. We're going to read, uh, I'm going to read very fast and you can read along with me. Although I grew up in the Middle East as a child, I traveled to Lucknow, India every summer. One minute I was sitting in the passenger seat of our family car moving amongst a sea of futuristic buildings on the way to Doha airport. And a few hours later, I was in the back seat of a Lucknow taxi maneuvering through the bustling city. My environment went from modern, sleek, sharp edge buildings to a juxtaposed, culturally fluid environment with historic and modern buildings interspersed throughout the city. In the Middle East, I was surrounded by skyscrapers flanking either side of the road. It was a sight I never tired of seeing, my personal haven. However, Lucknow's balance of historic and modern building styles was my introduction to architecture history with structures from diverse cultures, religions, and time periods. This this change in my environment, instigated by the different, differing architecture, highlighted design's impact on cities. With the ability to transcend time and environments and teleport us to a different atmosphere fascinated me. My annual visit shaped shaped out to be the foundation for my pursuit of design, setting me on a journey to study architecture in college. Uh, so this is an interesting opening paragraph in terms of being very um, vivid with what you're going through. Um, something I would like to see a little bit more of is um, maybe what did you feel in going through these different um, elements from the, the skyscrapers to the older neighborhoods. What is that feeling for you of architecture? Um, all right, let me continue on here. During my architecture classes at Blank Undergrad, a few concepts stood out to me. Integrating public spaces into building designs, creating social environments sur surrounding communities, and designing within underutilized spaces without interfering with their function. These classes were my introduction to public architecture and how built environments can be designed, keeping the needs of surrounding communities in mind. Something I would have you do is actually be a lot more specific here in what you mean. So you're talking about integrating public spaces into building design um, and creating social environments. What do you mean by this? What is creating a social environment and designing within the communities? Like actually tell us, give us an example of an underutilized space. So um, tell me about a space like I was here at this place and I noticed this old building that uh, because of the industry is changing, these buildings were now empty. And so now I'm thinking about how do we readapt these buildings to a modern use? You want to get very specific because this is right now very vague. Equipped with these teachings, I worked on two proposed pedestrian projects addressing these concepts, the Octosphere and the Alley Project. 
Both projects explore ideas of facilitating public spaces for community gatherings. The proposed design for Octosphere incorporates various features of public parks, such as a skate park, amphitheater, and a community museum within a pontoon style pedestrian bridge. As cities are getting more congested with an expected 68% of the world population living in urban spaces by 2050, cities need to begin exploring design strategies for maintaining recreational spaces within the urban fabric. Due to the surge in property demands in urban environments, vacant plots can be can be expected to be reserved for commercial use, which would decrease recreational spaces. So this is excellent with how specific you are being in the types of uh, design and projects you're talking about. The proposed design incorporates non-intrusive structures on watered bodies, expanding the city's public space without encroaching on valuable urban plots. However, in hindsight, I realized that the communities most under threat of losing public spaces reside in marginalized neighborhoods, which are usually pushed to the outskirts of the cities in landlocked areas, away from the premium waterfront properties. I want to further understand how existing structures can be strengthened and modified modified to accommodate variations of this design to be incorporated into diverse cityscapes. So this is really excellent because of the specificity where we're starting to understand the type of design this person cares about. And for many of you um, in your essays, when you're describing projects you work on, you really want to get specific in describing a project. You want to describe the who, what, when, how. I do know that MIT has a very, they, they allow you very long spaces. I think it's like 1500 words. So when you have an essay that's this long, you can get into a lot of that detail. Um, okay, let's continue on. The Alley project was conceptualized upon my return to Lucknow from the United States. I noticed multiple semi-abandoned alleyways scattered throughout my neighborhood, which were an excellent example of underutilized space in densely packed urban area. So this sentence right here, take this and move it up to earlier when I said, what do you mean by, uh, by uh, underutilized spaces, um, like be specific? You can fit this up here really well because you're already talking about the community of Lucknow. And so just use that rather than having a vagueness up front, like just go straight into it. The alleyways were originally designed as service lanes to access drainage, drainage sewage lines without disrupting the flow of street traffic. However, now they are primarily being used by cattle to take refuge from the harsh sun and by pedestrians to cut through rows of building. While these spaces are left empty, the neighborhood is congested with scarce public spaces and playgrounds for children who take to playing on the road amongst oncoming traffic. In this project, I explore how alleyways can be used as a social area for people to inhabit while trying to eliminate the negative connotation associated with them as being dingy and dirty. The proposed design incorporates all the alleys in the neighborhood to house linear parks and spaces for people to gather and connect with their neighbors. Um, so this is a really great example about how you think about design, like thinking about people, thinking about safety, thinking about um, fun and spaces for play. Um, that's all really interesting. And what I love about this paragraph is it's showing me how this person thinks. Um, and for the, for you, for you all in your essays, you really want to be able to show the way you think about the field. Um, and I think that's really interesting. Something I would encourage you to do, um, is I think for, I, I'm not sure about the architecture program. I know for urban planning, MIT only has one essay. So if you only have one essay um, and you don't have a personal statement, then you want to add in some aspects about you that are um, about you personally. So something I'm curious about, and maybe I read too fast, so I didn't pick up on this, is um, what is your relationship to this community? Are you from there? Is your family from there? Why were you in the Middle East and, and kind of what's the connection between you being in the United States and you being in the Middle East. If you are from there, I think that's a really important point to highlight that um, you have a personal connection and you understand um, the, the community um, and like what the community needs are because you have a personal connection that's actually really relevant to the practice of architecture, like your ability to understand the community. So I would encourage you to mention it. And this goes for um, many of you. I read lots of people's essays where um, they have a personal connection to a place and maybe they mention, oh, in my home country, but they don't tell 
us where the home country is. Like, tell us what is the country you are from and what you want to do there. Um, recently, I read an essay from someone who wants to transform the construction industry in their home country, and they didn't mention that they were from Thailand. Um, and without mentioning that, it's hard for the reader to understand, well, what are the infrastructure problems in Thailand related to the weather and like the zoning and the permits and all of that stuff that is specific to Thailand, you need to name that up front. So then the reader understands what is the challenge you are trying to solve and address. And because MIT wants to know what is unique about you and what are you going to contribute to the field and the community, that's actually something really unique. Like I am from this country where um, we have these issues related to safety and underutilized spaces because of these X, Y, and Z changes in these rural areas outside of the the cities and I want to but I want to kind of combine what I've learned in the United States and apply it to this uh, to my home country and be able to change the trajectory of these spaces. Um, so that's something important to note to to note to bring in your your personal background because that's something that's going to make you stand out and be unique. All right, so let's continue on. After graduating, I joined a boutique interior design firm in NYC at my design uh, at blank. My design thinking was redirected from the urban lens down to the human scale while working on millwork designs and spatial layouts. I had to understand people's natural movement through spaces and was taught early on that everything a client interacts with needs to be measured by the most natural movement. The attention to detail of the human experience was a viable viable perspective, a reminder that buildings are designed for people and should be curated inside and out with the purpose of enhancing their experience within the space. As Frank Lord Wright said in the design of the Guggenheim Museum, form and function are one and each should be created to complement each other instead of focusing on one or the other. The idea resonated with me during my experience of working at Blank Company. So um, something that's missing from this paragraph that was in the previous paragraph is this is very vague. What do you mean by people's natural movement through spaces? I would like give give an example of like um, uh, in this space, which was supposed to be used as um, a co-working space, uh, we had to like originally we were thinking X, Y and Z, but then we realized that would actually be a barrier and it would take people too long to get to the bathrooms. And so we actually changed, like, you know, give us the details. Um, for example, I just did um, a, a remodel of my um, garage into a home studio. And I put so much thought into the functionality of how we use this as a studio for recording, as well as a guest room. And we had uh, our, our studio tech team come in to set up lights and cameras, and they want to put ugly lights and cameras everywhere. And I was like, that doesn't work because this is a guest room. And so I can't have have tripods everywhere blocking the utility of the space. And we had to come up with really creative solutions like installing um, hinges into the ceilings that pop down the lights and that we can pop up the lights and be minimally intrusive to the use of the space. So I just gave you that as like a concrete example of the who, what, where, why, how. So give us an actual example of when and how you did that rather than just talking in generalities. Okay, so let's continue on. Building on my undergraduate and work experience, I'm eager to be part of the master's in architecture program at MIT. Uh, SAP's interdisciplinary collaboration and focus on design and research design attracts me immensely. I want to explore the intersection of resilient, sustainable design and building solutions for inclusive and balanced cities. As overpopulation surges and cities have started facing the repercussions of climate change, now is the time for me to pursue my master's in architecture. MIT's faculty and focus on sustainability and urbanism is a learning and will best prepare me for the future. I'm looking forward to working with Dr. Reinhard Gohard and learning about his approach to upgrading low-income dwellings. The opportunity to learn from Dr. Gothard on combating over population and designing substantial settlements for the marginalized will be a valuable experience to build in my career. Additionally, I'm excited to work with Professor Andrew Scott to learn the intricacies of designing, afford, uh, designing affordable housing with a low carbon footprint. So this is um, this is an in, uh, interesting perspective in terms of what you want to do with architecture, and it's very specific. And so this is really great. Um, 
And I would encourage you to actually talk about this a little bit more in the projects you mentioned up here about the community of Lucknow and, um, and talking about uh, different projects you've worked on. In which ways has have those things showed up as needs in the work you've done? It's, it's somewhat comes up when you're talking about India and some of the needs you see, but I think you can double down on it and uh, bring it up a little bit more. So there's a clearer thread to you wanting to do that now. And then additionally, in your work um, with this design company, how was that maybe there or how was that maybe missing? So, um, you know, a lot of, um, you, uh, like you say, boutique interior design firm in NYC, I assume that means you're not really thinking about affordable housing um, or thinking about overpopulations or, or those more big um, city kind of issues, urban issues, social issues. And you could actually talk about that in this paragraph. Like I learned a lot about design and how to make things beautiful and functional, but what was missing is we weren't actually looking at, well, what are these social challenges? How do we actually design in a way that makes housing more affordable and more accessible? How do we design in a way that actually addresses these social issues like overpopulation? Like what was different about designing in New York versus like what you saw in India? I think there's a really good way you can transition in this paragraph to now, like that's been missing in your career and that's why you wanna go to grad school to focus on those issues. Another thing I would encourage you to think about is um, seeing if you could cross list courses um, with urban planning, because urban planning is far more focused on these issues than um, architecture is. And this is for many of you. I, I see many people want to be in this realm that's kind of cross disciplinary. And at many universities, you can cross list courses and you can mention that as something you want to do at the school. Like I'd love to cross list a course in the policy school where I could take a class on X, Y, and Z policy issues. And that can help build my lens on X, Y, and Z and bring that into architecture. So do you see how you can get more specific about what you want to do in the school by talking talking about all the different resources the school um, brings together. Um, overall, though, this is a really great paragraph. It's very specific about the kind of um, work you want to do and the professors you want to work with. However, I think that theme of uh, needs to come up earlier in the essay about wanting to work on these issues. Okay, uh, let's continue on. At SAP, I want to explore the intersection of public versus private spaces and how buildings in congested cities can be designed to house healthy spaces for marginalized communities. I want to examine how building design can adapt to withstand the recurring effects of climate change. Primarily, I want to determine how building design can be inclusive for all communities, especially the marginalized, and how we can make our cities greener, resilient, social, and more in sync with nature rather than removed from it. MIT's rigorous pedagogy and outstanding research opportunity is the ideal place for me to pursue my passion for sustainable universal building design. I'm confident that armed with my diverse background at the intersection of Western and Eastern cultures, I will bring a unique voice to the educational discourse. So overall, this is a, a pretty great essay. The writing was pretty great. I, did, I didn't really do any like grammar edits or anything like that. Um, one thing I would encourage this person to do, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, is add in a little bit more about you personally, like tell us who you are at the intersection of Western and Eastern cultures. And you can add that in earlier in the beginning of like, you know, being at this intersection, like I come from, I don't know if you're from India or where you're from, but just say I'm from this place. I've also had the opportunity to, um, you know, live and work in the U.S. And here's how I see the melding of these cultures. Um, and you having that unique perspective is something that's valuable. And so you should highlight that up front rather than kind of waiting till the end. Um, but overall, this essay is very strong. I just encourage you to get a little bit more specific in those places and really tie together that theme of uh, wanting to work on design of marginalized communities and bring up some of those questions um, earlier into the essay. Um, so overall, that was really great. I want to give this person an opportunity if you're here to um, unmute yourself and maybe ask any uh, any follow up questions. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. Uh, thank you for reviewing the essay. It was, it was great feedback. Um, I do have some follow up questions. So um, I know that MIT is allowing about two to like one and a half to two pages of um, of like your word limit. But 
I'm I'm basically using this SOP as my as a basic backbone that I want to apply to other colleges as well, and they have a very restrictive um, word limit that I'm already exceeding, and I I want to see how I can really um, pack everything that I've done within that like 900 to 1,000 word limit because right now I'm I'm straddling 1,200. Great, awesome. Okay, a quick thing, and this is for everyone. This paragraph here. You can take this and make it into like one or two sentences. You don't need all of the detail of like, first I saw this and then I saw that just like I was here and I noticed the juxtaposition between the skyscrapers and then going to the outside towns where, um, you know, things are older, more rural. It's more cultural, historic, like make that two sentence rather than all the flowy language. Another thing, too, this is for um, a, a way you all can do this with partners or friends, like you definitely want to get a ton of feedback on these essays. And I did this with a lot of my friends um, is like, you can have them read a paragraph and then have them say back to you what they remember about the paragraph. And they will say back two sentences of the main point and then write that down. Like how I just gave you the two things off the top of my head that stood out juxtaposition between skyscrapers and the rural areas. Like that's the main point of this uh, of this first paragraph. And so cut it down to the main point rather than the, the all the, the story elements of it. Another thing, and this is for everyone, um, this is a little uh, too much that you don't need. It's fine if you have a longer essay, but um, uh, pretty much everything that is a vague generality about the university, you can um, you can cut out. So I would like delete this whole paragraph. It's very, uh, this whole sentence, it's um, vague, it's generic. It's something anyone can say. So if like everyone applying could say the exact same thing, it's not worth saying it. Um, I see a lot of people do like this sentence is great as er overpopulations and cities, um, blah, 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 climate change. That's, that's a unique thing about you and what you're interested in. Um, uh, but things that are like, um, MIT is uh, one of the top universities to study architecture. Delete that. It's like they know that. They don't need you to remind them of that. So this is for everyone. When you see a sentence that's just like, I look forward to being at blah, 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 where I get to mix blank, blank, and blank. Like those tend to be very generic sentences. You could just remove that. Um, and so I would have you look for anything that's just like a generality remove that whole thing. Um, you can also like, you have two paragraphs on this alleyway project, uh, turn it into one paragraph. Um, so look for uh, those, those kinds of things to cut out. Um, and this is something that's an excellent thing to have a friend do because they are less attached to the words than you are. So if you can have a friend read your essay and identify things to remove, it's a lot easier because they're less attached. It's like an emotional attachment. So it's easier to have someone else uh, edit down your, your words. If you want to have your essay reviewed, you can sign up for my office hours at the link below. You can also get notified about upcoming office hours dates when you sign up for my newsletter and you can download my free sample essays of people who've gotten into MIT, Harvard, Berkeley, and many more places.